Welcome to our session on what is Integration Platform as a Service, otherwise known as iPaaS. And what makes this as a service unique is really the integration platform piece of it. So today we're going to talk about the why, the how, and the what of it. But before we get into that, you may be wondering why iPaaS is even relevant to you. So let's start with a simple analogy. Like many of you, I have a phone with potentially hundreds of different apps on it. And I probably only use five to 10 on any given day. You can translate this experience to your organization. Maybe there's only five to 10 different apps or systems that you're using on a day-to-day. -day. But if you think about the entire organization as a whole, there's potentially thousands of different or applications that need to be managed across your entire organization. This can get really overwhelming to be able to effectively manage and monitor. That's where iPaaS comes into the picture and leads us into the why. If you consider the different types of systems that you might have within your company, they tend to look something like this. B2B, SaaS applications, devices, data, and on-premise systems. Now, traditionally, you would see a lot of businesses wanting to be able to leverage the data across many of these different types of systems. So they'd build these integration points between each of these. But going back and forth, you can see how this can quickly get overwhelming having to manage and monitor all of the different types of connections that are happening within the organization. And there's certainly no reusability coming into the play. That's where iPaaS comes in. It sits right at the top of all of this and serves as a management layer for being able to interact and integrate with all of these different types of systems more effectively and more efficiently for you and your business. So let's see how we can put this into play with a simple example. Over to the how. Here we have Taylor. Taylor is a very successful sales agent selling laptops to her customers, and she's already secured a new customer opportunity. Traditionally, all of her customer information is stored in a CRM. And what Taylor needs to do is to be able to take all of that data and put it into her quoting system so that she can send a quote to this customer. Now, if you look at traditional methods for this, Taylor would have to go into her CRM, copy down the fields, and then re-input them into the quoting system. An easy way for manual errors to pop up with mistyping or typos and things like that. Or maybe it's just a little bit more sophisticated and she's able to download a spreadsheet from her CRM and then re-upload that into the quoting system. But you might see more issues where fields are uh, being mismapped between the different systems. And this is also just an extra tedious step within the process. Again, this is where iPaaS can make the whole entire process more efficient by sitting right between these two applications and building an integration between both of them, rather than requiring Taylor to serve as the middleman. This means as soon as she starts typing the customer's name within the quoting system, it could populate all of the corresponding data for her automatically. But the best part about iPaaS is this isn't the end of where you're able to integrate and bring different data and systems together. She can also add in things like her payment platform so that the customer can immediately respond to the quote by providing payment. Or maybe she also wants to integrate with her procurement system so that the order can be sent out for delivery right away. This can all be managed through her iPaaS and building these different integrations between the whole process. This is a larger example within the company, but there might be use cases that she wants to bring to her team specifically. A great example of this is if she has uh, a new mission to be able to notify her team whenever a lead is received. So she could go into Salesforce, and set up an integration with her iPaaS that sends a message in Slack to her team every time a, a new lead is received. This is part of the build piece of it. Taylor is able to build this integration between these two different systems. How is she able to do that? Leveraging connection points. Often you'll see with common SaaS applications like Salesforce and Slack, there are out of the box connectors that make these connections even faster for her to be able to use. But an added piece of this might be she only wants to notify her team when it's qualified leads. So she needs to make sure that the data that's being received within here is only alerting when it's a qualified lead. That's where the transform piece comes in, where she's able to transform the data that's flowing between these systems 
so that whenever she gets a notification to her team, it's only of the most qualified caliber of potential customers. The last bit really starts to look at our manage, where she'd be able to oversee this entire process and ensure that it's operating without any errors or as as efficiently as possible. That was our how. So let's get in just a little bit deeper to the what of it. Here we were just taking an example where Taylor was able to build this different integration flows. Now with the build piece, you'll generally see tooling like no code authoring with high code options available as well. But that really facilitates building these types of integration flow patterns more easily by any type of user. The next piece is really around connect. This is where we're able to get into the things like the connectors we talked about, which serve as pre-built out of the box uh, connection points with common SaaS applications. So you only have to provide your credentials to get started. This also includes things like templates, which might be the full pattern pre-built for the user. In the industry, these are commonly called PIPs. The next piece is really around transform. Here's where we saw we were able to transform specific types of data, but it also applies to AI transformations, which could provide help with mapping fields or transforming different types of uh, formulas and providing those for you more effectively. The last bit is around manage. And here, this can apply to a lot of things as well, but you typically see it applying in terms of observability and monitoring to make sure that you're able to troubleshoot and debug all of your processes across the business and maintain all of your integration points. Excellent. Well, hopefully through these examples, you were able to see why integration platform as a service is so pivotal to any business looking to transform digitally. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. If you liked this video and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. If you have questions, please drop them in the comments below.